everyone, it's Jason McCann from Mountain Tactical, and I'm sitting here with Colin, and Colin is who has been behind the cameras as we've been filming this last series. And if you guys saw the 2023 Almost Killed Us video, Colin is one of the, the men we hired to straighten out the shop, to get everything back on track. He has a, a long history uh, helping out operations with companies much larger than ours. And so thank you for helping us get back on track. Uh, thank you for doing filming and just putting together, he assembles all the product around here. So man, you're a man of many talents. Thank you. Yeah, it's good to be aboard and good to be here. And I'm just learning more about the Tika world and excited to just to get on this journey. Yeah, well, it's it's a journey. Yeah. I mean, it's a rabbit hole. So Colin has been bit by the Tika bug after being here for a year and he wants to buy his first Tika. And so we figured we'd talk about it, see what you want to do. Because I know a lot of people don't, they might be buying their first gun and they don't know which one to buy. And we have a worldwide audience that could give us some feedback. So as we're talking, throw feedback uh, in the comments section and kind of see what rifle should Colin buy based on what we talk about. So Colin, I guess, did I mean, you weren't a shooter growing up. No, I'm a fisherman by trade. I love hunting. I love. I think shooting and hunting is um, is amazing. I'm all for it. I'm not a hunter. I'm a fisherman by trade. But like I said, coming here into the candy land of Tikas, <laughs> I'm, um, I need one. So yeah, I'm just sort of thinking sort of a longer range target shooting rifle. Um, I love suppressors, so I want to throw a suppressor on there. But yeah, really just kind of just want a Tika, do some long distance target shooting and, and get a suppressor on there. So kind of whatever you can point me in the right direction is where I want to go, I think. Okay, so you're thinking more as a target rifle, okay? Mm -hmm. And then when you're talking longer ranges, that's different for everybody. Right. You know, obviously we're in Montana, we have miles uh, True. of shooting capability, cross canyon shots. We can get into some very difficult terrain. True. But like I grew up in Texas and if you shot over 100 yards, everyone called you a liar. You know? <laughs> so what, what do you consider to be a long range shot? Yeah, not like super far. Like I'm, I'm still new-ish to shooting, uh, getting into that world, especially long distance shooting. I don't know. You know, I'm thinking four to five hundred yards, something like that. Nothing extreme, but nothing too close. Just something, you know. And again, I'm learning, but you know, four or five hundred yards. So, so are you just more interested in the challenge of it? Yeah, that's it. Okay. The challenge. It's fun. You know, it's just a new hobby you can get into and dive into. And if you can get out there and shoot some targets and actually make it work, it's fun. And yeah, just right. kind of a new little hobby. So do you think you would ever want to shoot a competition or? If I got good enough and I was having enough fun and uh, I'm pretty, I usually dive into these things like fly tying, et cetera, pretty hard. So, you know, if I get into it and I was out there plinking and dinging and then I'm sure, I, you know, I wouldn't be opposed to getting into some competitions. Yeah. Gotcha. So, so we're thinking four or 500 yards to start the competition. Now, are you thinking of reloading or do you want, off the shelf ammunition when you're when you're starting out. Yeah, I won't be a reloader. Just uh, seeing some of the, the the tools and the time that it takes to do that. So I'll just be buying off the shelf stuff. Man, we have a whole dedicated room to Ooh, reloading in here. Well, it's, <laughs> that is a whole other rabbit hole. It is. Okay, so off the shelf ammo. So, and I heard you say something about suppression. Have you ever shot suppressed before? You know, I've never actually shot suppressed. I've watched a million videos about them and all that. I've never actually shot um, a truly suppressed weapon. Gotcha. Yeah, you, you never go back. Yeah, I won't. <laughs> okay. So, in your research, are, are there any calibers that kind of catch your eye or, or anything that you're, you're kind of... Something that kind of is interesting to yeah. you from already? Initially, I was thinking two, two, three, but I don't know if that's got maybe as much oomph as, as I'd want to kind of do what I want to do. So, leaning maybe 6.5 Creedmoor okay. is, maybe is... But I, again, I'm learning and, and need some kind of direction and, and um, advice. Okay. And then hunting, I know that you, you don't uh, eat red meat. And so- Yeah, I got a funky gut. Funky gut, okay. <laughs> not that you're not a vegan, so- No, you're no, not, I eat fish survive, and chicken. You couldn't yeah, survive yeah. here being a I'm vegan. A chi I eat chicken, <laughs> fish, all that. I just, I'm, red meat just does not settle well with me. Okay, so hunting's pretty much off the table. Pretty big, much. Large, let's say big game hunting yeah. is pretty much off the table. Yeah. So. So a 223 would be very inexpensive to shoot. They'd have great off the shelf ammo. Four or 500 yards would definitely be challenging. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't meet the power factor of a lot of competitive shooting, mm -hmm. 
and 223 is really hard to suppress. Okay. So if you're really thinking about that hearing protection aspect of shooting, just kind of being able to get out there and enjoy uh, shooting without you know hearing protection or with minimal hearing protection, the 223. I, I don't know, guys. What do you think? I mean, 223. We've we have a video out where we're shooting a 223 at a thousand yards, and that rifle build was highly specialized. I had hand loaded rounds and rifle shot great we were you know consistently hitting the gong at a thousand yards but that's that's really tough to do yeah, oh yeah. with a 223 oh yeah so then you brought up 6.5 creedmoor what what do you find interesting about the 6.5 creedmoor you know i'm still learning a, a little bit about that round i don't know a lot i just uh some of the rifles that i've been looking at on the tika website they only they come in in that chamber um and you know what it just it's a little bit of a bigger round i know some of the discussions that we've had versus 223 and 6.5 just in my minimal experience with uh, researching different types of calibers, that seemed to be the one that I'm sort of more interested in. Okay. So if you're looking at something like a 6.5 Creedmoor, are you, are you trying to keep recoil at a minimum? You know, I suppose recoil isn't on my mind too much. Obviously, I don't want it to kick like a mule, but recoil is something I haven't given a ton of thought into. Um, you know, suppress will take down a little bit of that and then... But, you know, I'm, I guess I still need to digest some of the recoil factor as well. Gotcha. Because there's definitely some pros and cons of the, the 6.5 Creedmoor. Mm -hmm. And if you're buying off-the-shelf ammo, everybody's making ammunition mm -hmm. for the 6.5 Creedmoor. I mean, the kind of the world's your oyster as far as bullet selection. And it doesn't recoil much more than a 243. And it definitely has some... I mean, if you ever wanted to use your rifle hunting, if you ever changed your mind yeah. on that, you would definitely have you know more knockdown power. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. That might be a decent solution. The other, um, I don't know. What do, you, what do you guys think of the 6.5 Creedmoor? I know there's been a lot of controversy out there uh, with this round. So uh, yeah, maybe give some call in some words of wisdom on that. The other thing I was thinking about, and this is going to go into the other end of a spectrum mm -hmm. is from a from a target long range shooting aspect there's there's always the 30 cals so the military uses 308 and 300 wind mag and this is obviously before getting into the really really big stuff right um 308 plentiful and you can kind of get whatever ammo you know as far as bullet selection and everything and same with 300 wind mag um definitely significantly more recoil with the 300 wind mag it wouldn't be the kind of rifle that you would just go out and plink with right you know but there is also the 308 mm -hmm. and the 308 inexpensive to shoot military surplus ammo uh suppress as well the 6.5 uh creedmoor suppress as well but also the 308 suppress as well and i think maybe just something to think about because Really, the only time uh, 308 ammo becomes an issue is when people start panic buying. Mm -hmm. And basically, anything that's used by the military is usually the first thing that's picked up. 5.56, 223, uh, 7.62, and uh, 308, mm -hmm. kind of in that family of, of cartridges that is usually panic bought. Yeah. And then there's always, you know, the classic 30-06, which was the original long-range um bolt action round or long range military round. Mm -hmm. And that has a little more oomph than a 308 without the huge jump and recoil to the 300 wind mag. And even when people are panic buying, 30-06 is plentiful. Now, still not a round that I think you would plink all day with nah. in, a, in a bolt action rifle, but I don't know, what, what do you think about some of those other options? Yeah, they're they're a little bit on the higher end spectrum. I've shot a few of those. I have an uh, older friend that has a 30, 30 out six, I believe he has, and I've been out Tika, been out there and shooting that. And um, you know, the only uh, I guess I'm more interested in shooting, going to the range, and maybe putting round after round, or, okay. or multiple rounds, not round after round, spending all day, but you know, multiple rounds. So you want to shoot something with high volume? I think so. Okay. All right. Huh. Well, what do you think Colin should do? I think we should uh, let everybody make some comments, get some feedback. We'll do some more research and uh, we reconvene. Let's do it. All right. So until we reconvene, go get some trigger time. <laughs>